Hey everyone, Matt Lieb here, most moral co-host of the world's most moral podcast. Uh, Before we get into today's uh, episode, which, by the way, is an excerpt from the uh, episode we did with Will Menneker last week. This is about uh, an hour from that episode. If you want to hear the full almost two hour episode, you could go to patreon.com slash badhasbara when you subscribe to that. You get all the episodes uh, early. You get it before everyone else. And uh, also you get bonus content like uh, this episode of uh, Bad Has Bara. Now, we are putting an hour of this episode. That's what you're about to listen slash watch. Um, for those of you out there who don't want to join the Patreon, you don't have the money, totally understand. Not a problem. But here's the thing. If you are someone who uh, can't afford to subscribe, there is a free way you can help the show. It's called Audience Survey. If you'll see at the, uh, you know, in the show notes, either if you're watching on YouTube, it'll be in the description, or if you're listening on a podcast app, it'll be in the show notes of the episode. You'll see a link to something called Audience Survey. Uh, What is that? Well, it's a way to get to know you better. We want to get to know our audience. You know, what are you thinking? What are you feeling? What is it fucking, what is it like? you know to be you uh and it's it's helpful for us so it takes about 10 minutes to fill out uh you can skip questions if you want and also i understand for some people 10 minutes is a long time but remember you're helping us and it's free so why don't you scroll on down to where it says audience survey click that link and help us out that would be so sick anyways let's get on with this episode of Bad Has Barra, an excerpt from episode 54 with Will Menneker of Chapo Trap House. Enjoy! Hello and welcome to Bad Hasbara, the world's most moral podcast. That's right. My name is Matt Lieb. I'm going to be your most moral co-host for this podcast. And I am the one them call Daniel Mate. <laughs> I am the one them call <laughs> Daniel Mate. What's up? How are you doing, Daniel? Bad Hasbara Massive. Uh, I'm good. I'm good. How are you, Matt? I'm doing pretty good. You know, I'm uh, just uh, fucking, I found my mouse. Um, that was pretty sick. The last episode we did, um, I had to work off the laptop because my daughter stole my computer mouse. It's not interesting to the listeners of this podcast, but it's interesting to me. In case you were listening or watching that podcast and you're like, Matt seems um, frustrated. It was because I was just thinking about how you you can't really punish a two-year-old, you know? <laughs> Like what? I, I, like what can you? What can you? You're, you know, I'm not gonna hit her. She's two. Um, have you heard of uh, Christian conservatism? I have heard of it. Is it? It has some answers for you. It, they the, beat their kids. I don't know exactly what they do, but they have ways of, mm. of coercing and and actually, I think a lot of traditions. If you really look deeply into the uh, into them enough, you'll yeah. find ways to punish your daughter. And it it doesn't All have right. to necessarily do with consequences. You can make her feel less secure in the emotional attachment i do that really all the time insight. anyways okay so just ramp that up maybe oh and more okay yeah. that's fine i'll try i'll try it i'll try yeah. it. i'll pretty i'll pretty much do anything to get her to stop um taking my equipment stealing technology <laughs> yeah <laughs> this mouse costs more than your life <laughs> um i asked her where it was this is so stupid it's very cute though uh i said where's my mouse and she went hmm and then she pointed to the trash uh, and it is wasn't. That where it was in, no. She just just thought I was playing a game. Yeah. This ain't a game, kid. Uh, speaking of games, uh, the Hasbaris are playing games with us. That's right. The Israelis are attacking Bad Hasbara, the world's most moral podcast. We quit uh, playing games with our pod. That's right. Please our stop it. Pod. Uh, they, we got added to a Telegram group. Uh, where uh, it's it's called like you know, Hebrews fight back or some, something like that. And uh, they uh, they they put our podcast link on Spotify there and they say, everyone give this show one star. 
um, and they showed how to do it. You uh, you click any episode and you 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 click like a button that says watched or listened to, and then you can rate it. Um, and so they they did that, and now we're at like a three rating, which is that's you know that's not good. We're so at, hey, we're at least a three point three. <laughs> yeah, we, we are, are activating the iron stars that's says right producer adam <laughs> <laughs> yes we are activating the iron stars right now if you listen to this podcast and you like it and if it, you listen on spotify uh or even if you don't download the spotify app and f- help defend your country by giving us five stars on Spotify. What, what we want is the force of, of all of your five star ratings to be so strong that the mm-hmm. next time one of these people even tries to click on one star right their computer we, explodes exactly and then we kill their whole family we that's what we want i mean you know a, like not in a real you know what i'm saying <laughs> bing 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 bong uh but yeah fucking uh yeah do that give us help us out because uh hey you know what what the fuck man why they got why they got to do that although it is very funny uh because there are also some people who are commenting and all the comments are so israeli <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, oh, you, we are doing propaganda. It seems to me that you are the one who is doing the propaganda. <laughs> and I was like, cool. I wonder who this is. Yeah. Um, and and it, then they're like, you totally popcupied that guy. I'm trying yeah. to. Think, what's the Israeli version of pwned? Is, yeah, it's pop It's occupied. It's, it's, it's yeah. Occupied. Yeah. Um, shout out to producer Adam Levin. Uh, join us at Bad Hasbara, um, or at patreon.com slash Bad Hasbara. Subscribe now. And finally, today's episode is brought to you by Mercy Corps. Um, that's www.mercycorps.org. It's M-E-R-C-Y-C-O-R-P-S dot org. Please go there. Spend some money. Do that before you join the Patreon, but then eventually join the Patreon. Do it. Um, Do both. Yeah. All right, Daniel, what's the spin? Well, today on the spin, uh, I got this album by Ziad Rabani, who is an amazing Lebanese composer, playwright, actor, musician. And this is a soundtrack to a a play of his called What About Tomorrow? And they made a film of it that came out a few years ago. It was from the 70s. But when they dropped the film, it broke all Lebanese film records. Mm. The Force Awakens. Um, and it just the, for, he, the Force Awakens of Lebanon. It's the Force Awakens of Lebanon. He's an amazing musician, and just thinking about Lebanon right now. So that's for that. I got Janis Joplin Pearl because I don't own any Chris Christopherson, but we just did lose him. Yeah, and that's right. me and Bobby McGee is on here. Yeah, okay. And I didn't know that Chris Christopherson spoke up for Palestine, but he did. He was so he fucking about, cool. He was incredible. And he, he, and he so... stood up for stood up for Sinead O'Connor and yeah. uh was a union guy and he was an anti contra guy. I mean, he, he trained he, blade. What does that mean? <laughs> he was in the movie blade. I believe with, he was Wesley in blade. Snipes, no, I need to rewatch blade. Oh, he I, was. That's yeah. fucking crazy. I just put that together. So he was I an mean, action star, but um, then just, this is just the mood I've been in Sweeney Todd. We all deserve to die. I tell you why Mrs. Love it. Tell you why. Mm. Uh, Fucking every time Israel does something and they've been like winning lately and it, it like it, it makes me feel not funny and not anything except wanting to just see the whole human race bite it. And then finally, uh, Rocket Queen off Appetite for Destruction for some reason this morning was in my head when mm. I when I, you know, when I tuned for, into Twitter for and saw certain reason. images for whatever reason, who knows? Not why. necessarily celebratory, not necessarily just libidinal. Images. Just it, just it. Just, the song just rocks. You know where I first heard about Chris Christopherson was an Eminem song where he said, "You know Chris Christopherson? Yeah, well I'm pissed, pissed off, Offerson." <laughs> You're joking. No, no, I'm not. That is a lie. <laughs> You know Chris Christopherson. Well, I'm piss pissed Offerson. That and I want to be like lame, but I'm also like very good. You I got mean, it. Credit where credit is due. I give him credit also just for anytime he has one of those thoughts, he writes them down. And, yeah. and <laughs> I'm gonna put that in a lyric. That's right. Um, so that's the spin. Check out those records, especially uh the 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 Lebanese one. I think that sounds cool. I'm going yeah. to check that out myself. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a great guest today. Our guest, you might know him from the podcast 
Chapo Trap House. And by the way, speaking of Chapo Trap House, Matt Chrisman's book is available for pre-order right now. So go to chapotraphouse.store. You can pre-order his book. No pasaran, Matt Chrisman's Spanish Civil War. That's right. Um, but our guest from Chapo Trap House, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, welcome Will Meneker. What's up, buddy? Hello, glad to be here. Uh, hey, just, Will. Just right off the bat, uh, you know, I got I got a few things. I got a few things I'd like to talk about based sure. on the in, intro to the show. You know, mm-hmm. Matt, Daniel, you're two guys I respect a lot. I've I've read your work in the past and, and mm-hmm. enjoyed, enjoyed your comedy and writing. Mm-hmm. And I just gotta say. Um, how come you didn't know Chris Christopherson was Whistler in Blade? Because, uh, <laughs> uh, because I fucking um, just didn't follow him until Eminem told me about him. Eminem had to be like doing um, Chris Christopherson puns for me to know about him. I fucked up. And. And uh, number two, you know, once again, happy to be here on a show with uh, two gentlemen I respect so much. But I got I got to ask, it seems to me when you, you talk about the victims of the uh, Zionist state, it doesn't yeah. seem like you really give them a whole lot of agency, you know, be yeah, they Palestinian, Lebanese or American. And I'm just wondering, yeah. wh- mm-hmm. where, where is the agency on this podcast? And also, by the way, I'm uh, I'm recording now from uh, an Air Force base just outside of Tel Aviv. <laughs> So if if the if my connection gets screwed up at any point during the recording, just bear with me. I'll try to get it. Actually, on already. What's really funny, Will, is that when you were grilling him on Blade and Christopherson, your connection did get kind of screwed up oh. in the middle of that question. <laughs> so I think I think your handlers are handling that. I, I'll say this: I completely agree with you about the agency thing, and I'm I've, I've mm-hmm. you know invested what resources I have into a new Holocaust memorial mm. where the Ooh. empty shoes are animatronic and as you're sitting there feeling the grief they they sort of come to life uh-huh. and they 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 go and they kick a nazi in the nuts and yeah. that's that's the agency piece showing that we too even in mm-hmm. ex, ex, you know mass exterminated numbers right. still we we will dance again Exactly uh, on, on on these nuts. What I was thinking was that, like, you know, in terms of people having agency and also looking at their own part in their um, in the them being genocided, like the shoes at Yad Vashem should also have a little note in them that goes like, um, why didn't you just like walk away? <laughs> you know, do you ever do people ever ask, you know, like, hey, guys, you had shoes. You could have just gone somewhere else i don't know like if you're in austria go to germany or czechoslovakia yeah i mean or fucking you know that's it's the same thing with palestinians why don't you just go to lebanon it's safe there these so shoes be- are made for walking not for being led like lambs that's- to the slaughter in. <laughs> exactly right dude exactly right um well so excited uh to have you on the podcast uh i uh enjoy your podcast very much and uh I wanted to ask you some questions about Israel. Um, uh, why is it that the Jewish state gets all this flack, but not not New York? Because New York is kind of also the Jewish state. Do you ever think about that? Yeah, I mean, I mean, honestly, there are, like look, there, there are fifty states in America, but mm-hmm. people always just pick on New York and Israel. You That's know? right. The, like, two yeah, the two Jewish states and like there are like, you know, probably hundreds of countries in the world. And for some <laughs> reason, there is this huge double standard with Israel, you know, where, you know, like the double standard persists, you know, mm-hmm. where like they, they defend themselves and people say like, hey, oh, we, we, we hey, everyone said you could defend yourself, but not like that. Hold on. Slow yeah. down. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know? You, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's an it's an unfair double standard, you know, because. <laughs> Like, look, plenty of plenty of other states do what Israel does. I mean, plenty. Yeah. Look, like, United uh, States, uh, the United United States, Nazi all, Germany, all, all fifty states in the United States. Because here's the thing: everyone keeps saying, "Why are we giving all these money, all this money and web, all these money, all this money and all these weapons to Israel when mm-hmm. they, you know, uh, are in violation of international law or when they very recently killed an American citizen?" Right. But the answer is like, look, this is nothing new. I mean, like the U.S. government kills American citizens all the time. That's right. They, I mean, like, why shouldn't, then, you know, Jew, why you know, shouldn't you, Jews be able to do it? 
Exactly. And like all the states in the United States of America get tons of money from the federal government. I don't mm-hmm. hear any. No one's, no one's whining about that. Oh, oh, well, why are we giving all this money to North Carolina just because they had a flood? You yeah. know, it's exactly. just it's, it's, on, it's only the Jewish state that people, you know, maintain this ridiculous double standard for. Yeah. And they it, pick on our and they pick on our leaders, too. You know, whether it's Netanyahu mm-hmm. in the one Jewish state or Eric Adams in the other Jewish state. Whom I know you're a, you're a huge fan of. I mean, by the way, low key, uh, you know, I don't want to. I'm sure this has been an issue with you and your colleagues, but you, you seem to be the only Chapo who left in New York. Hasn't everyone else absconded for greener climes? And, and like you're, you're you're hanging tough. You're the one. You're the loyalist to this uh, to this great you know, city. So when things get a little thing, when things get when, when things get a little hot for the Jewish state of New York. <laughs> Um, we see who the real fair weather friends are as they, <laughs> as they decamp for you know more uh, uh, sunnier climates. Exactly. But you know, no, I'm I'm here. I'm supporting New York Giants, Yankees, Mets, Knicks, Rangers. All number one, Israel oh, yeah. st- still number one in all our hearts. Still number one recipient of military and foreign aid. Yeah. You know, and now and now our mayor, our mayor, they're blood libeling him. They they're are. blood libeling our mayor right now by. They're blood libel. They're just taking his text out of context, and they're using it to blood libel him. They're saying Eric Adams poisoned the well. Eric Adams <laughs> is is poisoning our drinking water. And it's like, no, he's just he's as 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 mayor of a major American city. It's important that he has you know diplomatic relations with the nation of Turkey. <laughs> yeah, that's very important. That's I, a <laughs> very important part about being mayor of New York or the mayor of the Jew, the Jewish city, the the holy city of New York. That's right. That's right. It's Where, uh, uh, the promised land. Oh, I mean, they'll uh, be building a fourth temple here soon. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, all but the there's, best. there's a lot to uh, get to. The, First all of all, best. just in terms of news, um, this is happening right now as we're uh, recording this episode. Um, Iran is firing missiles at Tel Aviv. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, look at this. Now, I got to say, that's a lot of... Uh, Wow, the, that's a lot of direct hits. No, 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 no. The, I, the Iron Dome has a new technology where they intercept something two inches above the ground. Ah. It, 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 nothing, no I impact. Like it. No impact. Yeah, it is. It's it's just kind of wild because it's like as we were setting up this episode, um, you know, the, the last episode we did was with uh, Naomi Klein, and it was just like it was just really deep episode, really dark episode because you know the shit in the last few weeks has been. I mean, it's been insane. There was a pager attack in Lebanon um, and uh, and Syria. And then, you know, you see just the other day they were bombing Syria now. Uh, and then uh, there was the death of uh, Hassan uh, Nasrallah. And just kind of like this generalized celebration that you saw uh, among like uh, Israelis and also like the fucking Hezbollahs on the Internet. Let's um, be real. It was a week. It was like two weeks of like solid... Wind. At least self-perceived W's for right. like they they could actually and and they kind of were winning. No, I mean in what, their like, in their limited, stupid, tactical, the, self-destructive, right, non-strategic way. Well, the only thing that they can like uh, celebrate now is death. Uh, That's at this right. point, <laughs> they love death more than you love life. Uh, but like you know, this is these are the types of celebration they always kind of overdo it when it comes to celebrating this kind of stuff. They're always just like l- we're we're gonna post videos of us being pumped up welcome to the six o'clock news and now the whores and then they break out yeah. like the, yeah, the dancers up. and the streamers and 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 every time i see this i'm like you guys every time like uh, the the smallest possible attack happens you know a, a child runs at a idf soldier with a pen um if they make contact with that soldier everybody cries the entire state of Israel is like we're in collective mourning for someone who was nicked in a bad injury by a child. And I, and all I can think is like you're setting yourself up for once again being it's just this constant cycle of humiliation that they put themselves through. Where now you see Iran just direct hits with ballistic missiles uh, at I, it, they say it's an army air base that was hit. And I'm just like sick. I mean, it, I don't know how to feel about it other than. Um, well, it looks like the Iron Dome doesn't work that good. What goes through your mind, Will, when you see those images? Um, it, you know, it's not like I'm certain that this will lead to 
even more ghastly violence. And, yep. you know, it's very hard to, you know, root for military escalation. But like, Absolutely. I think everyone should be realistic that the only thing that is going to stop Israel and drive it out of Lebanon and give the Palestinians a chance at not being exterminated is military action. And if Israel gets to it gets a taste of like one one millionth of what it's done to Palestine and its neighbors for like the last 50, 60 years unbroken, yeah. then like, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, like there's a good chance it'll just make them even more like apocalyptically suicidally violent. But like, I know uh, the, the, it's whether it's the Yemenis, whether it's the <laughs> Lebanese, whether it's the Palestinians, it's just like, those are the only people in the world standing up to stop them right now. And yeah. the military resistance and, no military action is the only thing, the only lever available to them. I would love it if yeah. we lived in a world where, you know, the the preeminent superpower could just stop this by <laughs> right. saying no by more, a, no yeah. more, no more of this. We're we're done with this. No more yeah. bombs. No what more. What do you want them to do? Support. Well, they're working. They're working tirelessly. Biden swore the other day. He again. He dropped another f bomb about yeah. how fucking yeah. angry he was about. Netanyahu. What what do you want from this man? I mean, yeah. like, and, and and also, like, I mean, I think I think I think it should be clear as well. Like, as far as like a domestic political concern, I mean, I think like not the only reason they're doing this, but a large reason is uh, to uh, to tank Harris in the election. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, it just. So I mean, if if if, if, they, if they don't if they don't care more than I do about them getting reelected, like, why the fuck should <laughs> yeah, I? Uh, it makes be no fucking sense. It, it turns it, out there's there's like a significant degree more Lebanese American voters. Oh yeah, in there's Michigan like eighty there percent more Lebanese in Michigan than there are Palestinians, and now <laughs> Israel is you know ki killing thousands in Lebanon. And yeah. also that thing from the State Department where they're not even trying to evacuate U.S. citizens from Lebanon. Right. We will not be evacuating at this time. They're saying book a commercial flight. Commercial flights are eight thousand dollars. It's just it's 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 fucking crazy because yeah. uh, this is, I mean, we just got to October, and they're like, "All right, time for an October surprise. <laughs> we are immediately going to go to war with Iran." That's what's happening. I have no idea what the calculation of the like Biden administration or or Harris is, where they're just like constantly going to just do all of the PR heavy lifting for the state of Israel. Only to watch them try to make them lose, which is something we've known from the beginning. So, you know, there are reports in Politico today that like the Biden foreign policy is being run by Brett McGurk and this guy, Amos Hochstein, a George W. Bush Iraq war guy and a former IDF soldier. And they are essentially running the White House foreign policy, knowing full well that like Biden, all of Biden's statements about how we need a ceasefire. Or we need to, you know, like we need the diplomacy to end this conflict or we don't want to see an escalation. We need a limited action in Lebanon is all just public diplomacy. And I think this is what we're seeing now, whether it's the. Uh, the Trump team or Harris Walls, but particularly Harris Walls because or Biden Harris, because they're in power right now. Yes. I mean, it's, it's their foreign policy. I, I think what we're seeing is like a, the, the 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 attempt to bring to fruition, like the dream of the neocons who came to power in 2000, which is to augur in some kind of final conflict with Iran and, and Hezbollah and like southern Lebanon or just with all of, of Iran and all of Israel's neighbors to just like settle settle the hash once and for all remove all any and all threats to our our and israel's regional dominance kill as many people as possible and just like yeah like just and just redraw israel's borders and you know i'd be usher in the uh, thousand year reich yeah it's it's uh you know it sounds like a lot of fun i'm very uh excited for what the future holds for um uh, for everyone um including us at home here in the united states uh which leads me to this next bit, which we alluded to earlier. Um, Ta-Nehisi Coates, he, uh, he wrote a new book that he is um, now doing a press tour for. He's doing promo. And he went on CBS this morning um, yesterday. And uh, he did... Now, CBS, like morning shows like this, especially when you're doing a book plug, are uh, essentially just promo pieces. Like, they exist for having not even a real conversation so much as um, just someone reading the synopsis of their book to uh, an anchor. Um, that is not what ended up happening uh, in a conversation with uh, Tony Dokupil. Is that his name? Uh, Tony Dokupil. 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 Um, 
he uh, decided to press him on the issue of what what he means when he says the crimes of Israel in his book. Uh, and I have some clips of that. Tan Hashi, I want to dive into the uh, Israel-Palestine section of the book. It's the largest section of the book. Mm. And I have to say, when I, when I read the book, I imagine if I took your name out of it, took away the awards and the acclaim, took the cover off the book, the publishing house goes away, the content of that section mm. would not be out of place in the backpack of an extremist. Mm. <laughs> in the backpack. <laughs> yeah. Like, He's going back to Eric that, Adams. Yeah. He secreted away in a popular knapsack, anti-Israel views. <laughs> Yeah, the assumption there, I love it, is that, oh, you know, all extremists are children who go to Colombia. Why not detail anything of the first and the second intifada? And is it because you just don't believe that Israel in any condition has a right to exist? Mm, mm, mm. Correct. Well, I would say the perspective that you just outlined, um, there is no shortage of that perspective in American media. Um, that's the first thing I would say. I wrote a 260 page book. It is not uh, a treatise on the entirety of the conflict between the Palestinians and the Israelis. But if you were to read this book, you would be left wondering, why does any of Israel exist? What a horrific place Good committing question. horrific acts. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. Sign me That's up. <laughs> funny. Well, I mean, like, I, I, I mean, I mean Coach, really, Coach really keeps his cool here. I'm like, like, Daniel, like you said, I probably wouldn't have. As soon as, soon as I got started talking about, like, you know, if you read this book, you might start asking yourself, why does Israel exist? Why do we allow this to take place? What an evil, rotten country. And I feel like, what, you needed a book to fucking figure that out? Have you been watching the news the last right. year? And, and not only that, but it's like the, the idea that he's like, listen, if someone were to, to, to read this, I'm reading this and I'm thinking, oh, wow, Israel is bad. But I but I know it, it can't be bad because I've always heard it was good. Like this guy is, is literally just saying, if it wasn't for the deep, deep programming that I've done on myself for the past 40, 50 years, uh, I might start thinking that you're right about gonna this make and me I'm change my well, Matt, I, Y'all going to make me change I, I, I my we're... mind up in here, up in Matt, here. I, y'all going to make me learn some facts up in okay. here. <laughs> Matt, I mean, uh, you, you talk about like uh, if, if – uh, if, if he has to face the fact of like, oh, hmm, what if Israel actually is a deeply evil, rotten country that we have no business and share, shares no values, at least our professed commitments to being a good country? Yeah. Uh, then he'd have to do some soul searching. I know I know we're going to mention this later, but w- we all found out that this guy got an adult circumcision. <laughs> yes. Like if he if he if he if he had to read a book and realize that, like, hey, actually, maybe Israel isn't the good guy. Then he mm-hmm. might ask himself, why did I get the tip of my dick cut <laughs> off as an adult man? We're going to we're going to get to that. That is where this is going. I just want to play the rest of the clip uh, just because I feel like I, I want to give props to ta Coates for um, the way he handles this um, just because I think it's very easy to find yourself. He's clearly uh, like taken aback by how confrontational this is for a CBS fucking morning show and uh, the fact that he is able to defend his position in a way that... Um, uh, and the still, fact still and the gets fact, him invited to high holidays at the end of the clip is is pretty the, great. And the fact that this is the red line that thou, black intellectual, shall not cross. No, you can come on. You you can you can go on a whole thing about reparations and make mm-hmm. us really reconsider a- our exactly. entire identity yes. Exactly. Yes. as yes. a country and yes. and suggest that in fact all of the wealth and privilege that that us white people are having in this country is ill begotten and that we might need to redistribute it. You can you can up overturn the tables of our self-understanding right here at home. But right, wait, because a, wait a minute. Because we're not wait actually going to let you do that. Because we're not going to let you do that's that. That's the whole You're, liberal thing. It's yeah, like, you know, yeah, yeah. we're going to let him talk about how, you know, oh, we really should, you know, defund the police. We really should, uh, you know, uh, support uh, the prison abolitionist movement. We really should. But you're not going to do it. This is something that feels scary because they're like, wait, it's within this guy's cultural grasp to maybe not, you know, end Israel, but to at the very least delegitimize it in uh, the minds of liberals and in the minds of, uh, of of white people in this country and people of color in this country, which is, I think, even more scary for these guys. Um, but uh I am going to play the rest of the clip because I just think he does such a good If thing. Israel has a right to exist, and if your answer is no... 
Why do the Palestinians have a right to exist? Answer, Why do 20 different Muslim countries have a right to exist? My answer is that no country in this world establishes its ability to exist through rights. Countries establish their ability to exist through force, mm. um, as America did. And so I think this question of right to Israel does exist. It's a fact. Uh, the question of its right is not a question that I would be faced with with any other country. But you write a book that delegitimizes the pillars of Israel. It seems like an effort to- I'm sorry, but the, is he saying the pillars of Israel is apartheid? Like this whole thing- The five pillars of Israel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's an insane argument to make, is that like you're delegitimizing the main pillar of Israel, which is that Jews should be allowed to kick out whatever ethnic group they want, um, which is why Top of the whole building of it. What is it that so particularly offends you about the existence of a Jewish state that is a Jewish safe place and not any well, of the other Tony, states I'm an out there? Semi- I'm an anti-Semite. I have, a, I have a deep, unabiding animosity towards the Jewish people, uniquely. Yeah. What the fuck? I mean, I'm sorry, but like, uh, just his interview tactic here is, uh, why are you gay? He's just doing the why are you gay guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that offends me about a Jewish state. I am offended by the idea of states built on ethnocracy, no matter where they are. Muslim included. <clears throat> I would not want a state where any group of people laid down their citizenship rights based on ethnicity. The country of Israel is a state in which half the population exists on one tier of citizenship and everybody else that's ruled by Israelis exist on another tier, including Palestinian Israeli citizens. The only people that exist on that first tier are Israeli Jews. Why do we support that? Why, why is that okay? I'm the child of Jim Crow. I'm the child of people that were born into a country where that was exactly the case of American apartheid. I walk over there and I walk through the occupied territories and I walk down a street in Hebron and a guy says to me, I can't walk down the street unless I profess my religion. Okay. I'm with another pal. No, 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 no. I want to. Uh, this yeah, is very, this, very it important. Is important. It it's is extremely important. His his other co-hosts, by the way, are f- are for sure furious at Tony right now. One hundred percent. Like you can feel them wanting to end this, and uh, it's it it makes me happy. Yeah, let me lay it down. I'm working with uh, the person that is guiding me. Is a Palestinian, whose father, whose grandfather and grandmother was born in this town, and I have more freedom to walk than he does. He can't ride on certain roads. He can't get water in the same way that Israeli citizens who live less than a mile away from him can. And why is why that? Is that okay? Why is that? Why, why is there no agency in that? this book for the Palestinians? They, they exist in your narrative merely as victims of the Israelis, as though they were not offered peace at any juncture, as though they don't have a stake in this as well. What is their role? Either apartheid is right or it's wrong. It's, it's, it's really, really simple. Either what I saw was right or it's wrong. I am, for instance, against the death penalty. What the person did to get the death penalty, it really doesn't matter to me. I don't care if they were selling a nickel bag of marijuana or if they were a serial killer. I am against the death penalty. Mm. I am against a state that discriminates against people on the basis of ethnicity. I hate that he has to make that analogy, but it's a very good analogy for it's the, purpo- a, it, for the purposes of this moron. Right. Yeah. It's a perfect because, because, analogy. Because, well, it, it, except that it puts us in mind that these people right. might have done something except. Just right. No, I mean, optically, obviously, you can make that argument. Yeah. But he's, he's right. It's like it's a principle. I am against I am against apartheid, period. Like this idea that you can justify apartheid based on like, uh, well, you know, the Palestinians are scary, though. And I love how agents, this, these meaningless psycho babble terms that have entered political discourse, agency, right? <laughs> agency is an important concept when you're working with your psychotherapist about overcoming your trauma. But what he's saying is, isn't it, didn't they probably do something to deserve it? Don't they deserve it? He's not talking about their agency. He's talking about their, their meriting this kind of fucking treatment. Yeah, Daniel, like, like when they say, like, oh, like, don't the Palestinians, don't the victims of Israel have any agency? <laughs> Anytime they display any agency, like when they tell you what they believe or they stand up for themselves or they fight back, <laughs> then they become, you know, uh, or they walk arms in to the air toward, yeah, or they or they wheel their wheelchairs towards the apartheid wall toward, you know, and get sniped. Um, that's what happens to people who demonstrate agency. Yeah, it's uh, it's fucking insane. Um, And uh, as Will mentioned before, as soon as I saw this, people started posting this article that came out. Um, 
this is uh, something I did not know. The uh, interviewer there, Tony Dokupil. I'm just going to call him. Count Dokupilled. He's Count Dokupilled. He's actually he's actually Colbert Report era Stephen Colbert character pilled. He looks a lot, if you took the glasses off, like that the sort of, right. you, you know, smart idiot. Right, I'm except he's he's he is not playing a character. He, earnestly, he, he actually stupid, yeah. is this. Um, so I just assumed watching him, I was like, you know, this, these are arguments that I've heard, you know, a thousand times over by you know family and other Jewish people I know, and also uh, other like Zionist uh, non-Jewish people. But that's just kind of what I assumed. You know, your Jake Tappers and whatnot. He was born into it. But it turns out, turns out, no. And uh, he wrote an article called My Adult Circumcision, How I Made the Cut from My New Religion. This came out in 2014. (laughs) Um, To remain uncut, I was told, is to remain spiritually cut off from the Jewish people. Oh, wow. This is um, this is great. I understand (laughs) the world doesn't usually think much about adult male circumcision. It's like having a chat about ball tramping or the Pentagon Kevlar underwear, uh, the Pentagon's Kevlar underwear, even on the covered wagon side of the circumcision wars, people. Uh, where people fight for foreskins of baby boys, no one wants to talk about grown men getting their corn shucked. Jesus Christ! Yeah, I mean, just you know, he's 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 making this hard for me to read. <laughs> uh, all right, so uh, uh, I get this and so much more. And yet, as someone who knows the sting of this particular ritual, who volunteered for it, in fact, and signed his own check to the part-time reaper who did the job, I have to say it's not so bad. All right. Uh, I came to uh, this knowledge on the way to the altar of all places. I was engaged to a nice Jewish girl. <laughs> he went to a freelance moel. <laughs> he did go to a freelance moel, though. Uh, um, I was engaged to a nice Jewish girl taking some free conversion classes at the big progressive Manhattan synagogue. I wanted to learn something about uh, uh, learn about something that mattered to her. And the more I learned, the more it mattered to me too. This wasn't a fur coat and summer kind of congregation. It was part of the reform movement. Only game for high holidays, mostly casual about pork, always down with female gay rabbis. When, when one of my own rabbis, in parenthetical, gay. Oh, but female. they still made you cut part of your dick off? <laughs> <laughs> Slip me the number of a moil, <laughs> a professional snipper. I laughed it off as a classic Jewish humor. I, l- <laughs> I love that. He's just like, uh, is that one of them Jew jokes? You're doing one of them jokes you people do. Um, no, they were dead serious. Uh, medically speaking, I was already circumcised, which the fact that he's already circumcised is wild Wait, what? to me. Wait, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. So what what is he what procedure is he getting done here? I just think a he's tune about up? to explain. <laughs> yes. He's getting he's getting a, a tune up. Yeah. He's he's All just right. uh, you know, it's a, it's a, getting a little bit more off. Yeah. So I was already circumcised along with most other babies born in the eighties, but that's no good for God. I needed uh uh Hatafat Dambrit, uh which uh, is a drawing of blood. To remain uncut, I was told, is to remain spiritually cut off from the Jewish people. That's the idea of the covenant. So he explains that uh, while bloodletting has always been a condition of the orthodox and conservative wings of Judaism, reform congregations have been willing to welcome the sexually sheathed and uninjured. Biblical law does not require otherwise, neither do most of the arguments in the Talmud. But I insisted. But I said, no, no, please, cut my dick. It's for love. Um so apparently, uh, he explains here that the reform movement uh, began, at least in this particular Manhattan synagogue, <laughs> where, like, listen, we're going to be, like, loose about all this other stuff, but let's bring back um, cutting a little bit of dick during the conversion ceremony. Um, this sounds like some kind of radical feminist men-hating reform oh, Manhattan shit. synagogue. This is all some kind of opt to get men to opt into self-feminization. That's Where's Jordan right, Peterson? Dude. They don't the, want men to be the, men. The reform, the reform movement <laughs> yeah. uh, wants men to give up their virility. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Tucker Carlson's going to do a whole bit on this. Uh, I'm just asking questions. So that's how I found myself biblically nude in a kind of spiritual locker room, a shower space in a converted brownstone, waiting for a man with a razor. Worst Lou Reed song ever. <laughs> Uh, it's like Eastern. Surra- it's like Eastern Promises. 
<laughs> yeah. The surroundings were civilized. More university club than Russian bathhouse. Uh, blue black tile ran along the floors and climbed the walls. A minty scent hung in the air, but all the no uh, noise had already washed away in the roar of my thoughts. I was 12 when Lorena Bobbitt cut her husband down to the size of an elevator button, igniting uh, purience and anger. This guy's writing, he's just, a, he's like, how, how can I, sh how many ways can I show that I'm lighthearted and, and, and uh, have a, a good sense of humor about my, my dick getting mm -hmm. mutilated. Like he, he, he's just. The greatest, ugh. the greatest thing about all of this is they uh, are divorced now. That's my actually favorite. this is very funny and cool to me. Oh really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Oh he's my god! He's literally he's like the oh, Walter Subcheck bro, of, of Jews bro. at this point. Oh he my is, god! He's real life Walter Subcheck. He's just like well, just because we're divorced doesn't mean I turn in my library card. I stop being Jewish. <laughs> it is so amazing. He goes on to say, when the Moyle arrived, he looked. I'm sorry to say, like Danny DeVito in Curls. We stood in silence. I opened my towel. Hello, groin. He opened a shaving bag with a glistening uh, instrument. Hello, knife. My moil produced a pen-sized lance, which he wielded ever so gently, like Lady Grantham with a paring knife. Uh, he sliced, sliced, squeezed, dripped, and was done. The whole transaction was over in a second, long before I could scream or faint or decide if I liked it. Um, instead, yes, I, I felt the way it. I remember feeling as a child when rising early, I could watch the light fill the woods behind my house revealing nothing at all scary. When the Moyle finally spoke, he spoke in Hebrew and I couldn't make out a word of it, but I had the feeling, <laughs> I love he couldn't understand, but I had the feeling of the substance of his, word, his words was important. And that if I could understand him, I would be in the possession of something profound, a message from God. It's only a penis. This is, I gotta say, I, I'm, it's like oh, it's oh, it's only impressive. oh, it's only a penis. It, okay, well, it happens to be if it's your if it's yours if it's just it's some someone else's. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Stick around. We're gonna take a quick break, but we will be right back. And we're back. This is Badass Bar, Where's Most Moral Podcast, here with Will Maneker of Chapo. Trap House. We're, we're going to do a, a big old rundown here of a, of a very particular guy. Do you want to you want to intro yeah, this person? When I first joined this show, mm -hmm. something we would often do, something you were already doing, is to sort of hone in on one particular poster, one particular guy, one particular you know, and and just look at the ways, the particular ways that Hasbara has given expression through certain personalities online. Sure. I just sent you a, a screenshot of his bio. Maybe you want to pull that up. We're talking about, and trigger warning there, uh, Will, for the Mets, uh, the yeah. Mets paraphernalia there. He's a Mets guy. I support yeah. the Mets. That's, I you do? all okay, the New York good. teams. Okay. Oh, good. hell yeah. Good. Okay, good, good. I thought Yankees and Mets didn't get along. All right. Well, the Mets don't like the Yankees, but the Yankees don't really think about the Mets. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. He's a, he, he describes himself as a liberal Zionist, a democracy slash NATO slash EU enthusiast, as we can see by the three flags behind Whoa. him. Yeah. Israel, uh, Ukraine, uh, and the United States. What a great combination. Host of Israel Explained. What's explaining in Hebrew? Hasbara. <laughs> and history of the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's his media inquiries, um, email and all that. Now, I know that he was Me Too'd when we yes. had Felix on the show a few weeks ago, and I even just mentioned him. Felix was like, oh, my God, it's that fucking guy. I didn't really know about it. I yeah. went in. I looked into it. Looked like he was sending <laughs> a bunch of inappropriate. But whatever. We're not going to get into that because I actually don't care for the purposes of this conversation, except to say that sure. maybe... Maybe listen, yeah. he has a past and he a past. he's trying to make up for it by bridging the gap between um, fascism and saying liberal things. And it's like he's you know, he's like a, a fascist with feelings, which I love. That's uh, that's who you have to be. It's like right. you have it, to be sad about it. If you're going is, to be a pro ethnocracy, you need to at least be sad about it. And he really gets it, which is the political analog of a certain kind of sexual 
predator, of course, a sort of sen- uh, you know sensitive, weepy, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know I was bothering you. How old are you? <laughs> Am I too old for you? Which were the kinds of messages he was sending, you know? So I think, I actually think it's sort of of a piece. But anyway, I started seeing his tweets, and you know, in this new age of Twitter, I don't know, I don't even remember what it used to be like in the days before X.com, the everything app, mm-hmm. but I just keep getting certain pundits showing up in my feed that I never asked to see, mm-hmm. and he was one of them. And there was just a few, uh, I, I started seeing, I mean, essentially, well, I just, maybe, let me just zoom out for a second. One of the things you guys have done so well on Shop over the years, you've created a whole canon, a whole rogues gallery of of, of pundits and political, quote unquote, thought leaders and whatever, who just drive you insane. And you, you spend the time to try to drill down about what is it about these guys that is so crazy making and so revealing about our political culture and you know you have your your classic list of columnists and pundits and whatever from across the liberal and conservative spectrum so i find myself with this guy having that kind of reaction a kind of fixated like i can't wait for when he tweets Mm -hmm. his tweets keep me up at night they drive me crazy just when i think i've seen the worst can you can relate yes to this kind of this this, absolutely sort of yeah yeah and and I've found it very therapeutic, cathartic, um, vicariously as I listen to Chapo, as you guys sort of what I would say is kind of goon on uh, some of you know the content, kind of exposure therapy. Scream about it. Try to understand what makes it so hey, crazy. Hey, making. Daniel, I I always finish. Okay, so you leave the gooning side. I always finish when it comes to my rogues gallery. And okay, really, what, who who would who who would be Batman without the, the Riddler, Two Face? The Joker, Catwoman. That's right. That's right. These guys <laughs> g- give us a reason to live. They're the reason in our life. All right. So here was the, this was the first time I sort of really clocked into <laughs> Shile. This was around, um, I guess, late spring, early summer. He said, I feel stupid and ashamed. In May, an expose came out on CNN detailing the abuses in State Teman. Then, which was the rape camp um, in Israel. Yeah. Um, then the New York Times released their own article on it. Both were backed up with Israeli sources, crossed with Palestinian ones. I dismissed them because my government sources and Israeli media denied them. My whole life, I was told that the international media was out to get Israel, that they were all anti-Semites. But today, and I want you guys to notice as we go through these, both the internal contradictions within yeah. each tweet and then the contradictions between the tweets. Mm-hmm. And then at the end, we'll show his attempt to be like, here's the method to my madness. Like, here's what holds my worldview together. And it's just so clear that exactly what Matt said, it really <laughs> is just doing this impossible Tasmanian de- devil tap dance, trying to hold in- completely right. incompatible views together. Um, but today I realized how much I was lied to by my country, by my friends, by my media. Today, many of the people I talked to who denied these allegations admitted they were true. What I love about this is, is when you first saw this, I remember this for you, like you said, it's the origin story. You were just like, wait, 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 wait. Is this is this a Zionist who's like finally coming around? That's and right. And you were kind of excited about it. I, you even I were was. Like quote tweeting him. You're like, yeah, hey, yeah, I'll man, show, you're I'll almost show that there, a, dude. <laughs> exactly. And I'll show that in a second, right? Yeah, yeah. But, so the, but this, this tweet continued, this endless tweet. He says, and the worst part? None of this is coming to light because the IDF and government have changed their hearts about it. It's coming out because the pressure from the UK, ICC, and ICJ was getting too great to ignore. This would get Netanyahu, Gallant, and the chief of staff in serious trouble, so they finally said the truth. That Israel is routinely torturing inmates. That sexual abuse is fairly common there. That people have been tortured to death. That is the worst part about doing rape inside of prisons is that the IDF only admitted to it because of pressure. That's the worst part. <laughs> worst of all, he says, even worse, I guess. Many of the people in this facility were innocent, rounded up by accident. But no, okay, hold on. We're innocent, rounded up by accident. So there's a little example of yeah. his little logical leap. Because <laughs> yeah. they were innocent, yeah. they must have been rounded it up must have been an accident. by accident. <laughs> That's great. Well, they certainly didn't mean to do it. Some accidents happen all the time in war. They were dolphins caught up in tuna nets, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. but there was no real verification process. Bef- it was a clerical error, you guys, mm-hmm. before they were subjected to this hell on earth. This can't go on. And I said, mm-hmm. 
I kind of admire this in a pale, paleolog. I think I meant paleontological sort yeah, of way. Yeah. Last, last of an extinct species that got wiped out around the second intifada. I'd say they got disillusioned, except they doubled down on their illusions. Mm -hmm. Shail is still hanging on to his by his talons, but at least the delusion is pleasant. What is the delusion? That liberal Zionism is a tenable way of looking at the world. Now, right. Now, Daniel, is this guy an American liberal Zionist or does he live in Israel? He grew He's up in Israel. Israel. He lives in L.A. now. Yeah. So he, he and, lives in Los Angeles. I guess what I'm I guess the uh, a thing that, that puzzles me here is he was like, oh, like I did. I didn't believe the news reports because uh, my whole life I've been told that the international press just lies about Israel. Did he watch yeah. any of the actual Israeli television where they were having these no. the guys who sodomized the man to death on their morning talk shows to be like, yeah. hey, everybody, it's me. I did it. I love it. And I'm going to do it again. And I'm, I'm, taking, a hero off my, now and I'm taking off my balaclava to tell you about it. Yeah. 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 yeah literally like like show, it's, it's it's the masked rapist. Everybody will be unmasking him tonight. On, uh... And that and that like, you know, he's he's like and not only have, I, I, I think these guys are not currently in prison I, I, don't, I don't think i think they've been more or less set free uh no, loosed yeah. upon uh, israeli society to yeah and are being hailed as heroes by all account for their uh you know uh their unspeakable rape and torture of political prisoners held in their uh concentration camps so i mean yeah. like you wouldn't need the new york times or the bbc to like lie about that you should just turn on israeli television yes. and see them uh give a trophy to the world's best rapist it's it's crazy because it's so clear that when he says, like, I was, you know, uh, this is not what is Israeli media was telling me. Uh, it's clear that his sources were uh, already American Zionist uh, Israeli media, like like English language Haaretz, you know, yeah. like <laughs> he was when he's and then he's like, and also my government sources. And it's just like somebody you served with in the fucking IDF before you fucking got the fuck out of Dodge. Like, who are your government sources? And yeah, they're going to lie to you, bro. It is it, it's it's amazing just watching somebody like being told to their face it's like having your wife you know like in bed with another man it's uh it, the bob that bob dylan lyric from positively fourth street comes to mind you know you say you lost your faith but that's not where it's at you mm -hmm. had no faith to lose and you know it and this right. guy acts so mm. crestfallen and disillusioned and we'll see this over and over again in his tweets so here's another example but but here he has to kind of admit that maybe it's a more than a handful of psychos. So Steven Eisman, who I don't know who that is, maybe one of you guys knows. Oh yeah, name. yeah. This was some some random guy. Like he's like a an accountant or a lawyer or some shit. Um, and he wrote. Uh, oh, isn't he the guy that The Big Short was based on? Yes, he is. That's exactly Wait, is right. He? Yep, yeah. yep. He was the guy Holy who did The Big Short. Uh, that is incredible. That is so, incredible. Mohammed Holy. Safa posts a video of captioned the screams of Palestinians in Gaza being burnt alive by Israel. A Holocaust is happening right before our eyes and the world is silent. And Stephen Eisman says, you must be kidding. We are not silent. We are celebrating. And Shail says, the glee with which some of us view Palestinian civilian deaths is disgusting. And then he quotes the Talmud, whoever saves a single life is considered by scripture to have saved the whole world yeah. because we are created in God's image. What happened to the value we once put on human uh, lives? Now, look, okay. Now, look, I know I am... Uh, for 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 certain reasons outside my control, spiritually mm -hmm. cut off from the covenant of Abraham. Um, oh, it's within your control, Will. Yeah, well, we should I mean, be within my control. You but now, you know, where's your agency, <laughs> Will? Where's your fucking I'm, I'm agency? Keep, let's just say I'm keeping strict control over it. For the time <laughs> I got being. a shaving like, kit right here, dude. It's like talking about like, oh, like as the Talmud said, to save a life is to save the world. Like, well. I mean, I, I seem to remember much of the Old Testament is just basically instructions on how you should commit a genocide yeah, against yes. everyone. Yes. Like the, you know, Canaanites, Philistines, like smote them all with the jawbone of an ass. And then Amalek. <laughs> Amalek. <laughs> yeah, Amalek. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's like a how-to guide to do genocide. Yeah, it, it's very funny to try to, um, like, lean on the morality of Scripture when you see someone, you know, celebrating a death of an enemy or, you know, or someone purported to be an enemy, because you're just like the, your entire worldview about like Jews as a people um, being 
like moral because of their scripture or anyone as a person, whether it's a fucking uh, a Muslim or a Christian or whatnot. It's just like this is just part of your whole like Jewish supremacist thing where it's like what happened to us being the most moral people in the world? What happened to us being better than everyone? We're supposed We're, to be fucking professionals. Yeah, <laughs> no, but like his his worldview is like don't don't be like them, the the animal animalistic Palestinians. Well, and, here we are. Look at this one. So yeah. we, we we covered this one with Felix, but it's worth it's worth recapping. Right in Jerusalem, a man hands out sweets after the Israeli operation in Lebanon. It never ceases to amaze me how some Israelis will mock and hate all Palestinians <laughs> while adopting their worst <laughs> customs. Just fucking insane. It's just like it, it is. It's a delicate dance, man. You're just like, listen. I if I'm going to criticize my own people. I have to also remind people that I think Palestinians are worse. That we're better. <laughs> that you we're know, still I'm, better. I, I, he's got a warning to all his fellow Jews. If we, if, if we don't knock out all this hate and genocide, we may become like Arabs. Yeah. And and, and then what would happen? This we'd, we'd have we'd, to genocide ourselves. Exactly. <laughs> and then we would lose our. <laughs> and and look at what we have to lose. I present the oh, ultimate stop, Israeli stop, lunch. Stop, stop, Take Joe, take, take it away. Take it to Joe. Look at look, it. Look, look at, at it, it well. well. Look at it. Connect oh, with your people. I oh present the ultimate Israeli lunch. This is why we are the greatest country on earth. Okay, now what we have here, What we? how would you guys describe what we have here? Now, okay, yeah. we have, uh, I see a uh, falafel uh, and It looks and like pita. corn on top of eels. <laughs> <laughs> He's got electric eel soup, and um, I, I assume Riker, Riker, Riker is sitting there looking at it. It's very unappetizing, and Worf is like, well, if you want to go on this away mission with me, you're going to have to get used to it. <laughs> you know what we, we got to build is we got to build one of those, like, wheel, like, randomizers where you, like, spin it, and then it exactly. picks a random tweet, because I can go through anything in here. And yep. find like you you've collected it feels like hundreds of these. Um, when did, this is this is from our own text. He deleted this. This is why I have a screenshot <laughs> from our text chat because I couldn't find it on his anymore. I love it's got the ha ha in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sent this to you last night. Yes. When did right wing Zionists start calling liberal Zionists anti semites? I don't remember that ever being a thing, and this month it's happened to me dozens of times. Talk about turning the term into a meaningless one. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, God. And all I can say uh, to that is uh, go go make more pickles, idiot. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, Where do I join the bully brigade on this guy? It's, it's, it's Can we just, do a collab with the, I mean, with the Zionists? Okay, when I, when I, reading the, it's like reading these guys' tweets. You know, it, it brings to mind, I mean, like, it's just his view of the world could only be described as like you know how like the stereotype is that Jewish parents like really want their kid to become a doctor. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, you yeah. gotta, gotta, gotta become a doctor. You gotta marry a doctor. But in this case, that doctor was Doctor Pangloss from Voltaire's Candide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, this he's, is. He's a great just one. got that rosy view of the world. Yeah, exactly. Uh, an image of all of the fires that broke out today. After months of the Galilee blazing, now it's mm. Lebanon's turn. May everyone in the region know safety and security <laughs> soon. Pray, prayers up. And, prayers prayers up. up. And when Pray. I when I sent that one to Matt, I'm like, this is like a fucking mashup of come on, people now. Yeah. Smile on your brother. Everybody yeah. get there. And die, motherfucker, die, motherfucker, yes. die. Like yes. at the same time laid oh, on to each other. God. And like if I didn't know any better, if I read that like and didn't know who it was saying it i'd be like oh this guy's a fucking ass he's mocking he's mocking them right now but Here's... no i think he legitimately is like i feel for the fact that we have to kill you like that's, that's just, right. it's this you know it's this like classic israeli thing of just like uh you know bombing and crying at the same time i look yeah. forward to May when everyone you, to know the day you forgive safety. us yeah. May everyone know peace and safety when we're done killing everyone right yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like literally every fucking speech that uh, Netanyahu gives in English is just like, you know, he just did one to Iran yesterday uh, in which he was just like, you know, rise up against your government, you know, because as you can tell, there's no place that we won't go. So, you know, we're, we're in your we're in your grandmother's panties right now. So you yeah. better speak to your government. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's just like openly threatening you while just being yeah. like, and as soon as we're done killing you, there will be peace on earth. 
I'm not I'm not sure if I finished. I do feel I, I do feel a bit spent. So maybe mm-hmm. but I'm glad we did that because it I feel a little less crazy. Well, um, listen, if you're if you're still edging, you, there's uh I feel like this is a at this point he's like a content mill. This guy writes yeah. new tweets constantly that yeah. are just like, you know, I love Israel and they do bad things sometimes, but Palestinians are bad too. Maybe I just need to admit I love this guy. I love his content, and I hope he produces more of it. Yeah, keep going. <laughs> you know. it's, it, it, yeah. Uh, but thank you both for helping me process the absolutely the, my my obsession with it. I love watching you go crazy reading his tweets. Yeah, it's yeah. One of my you, yeah thanks, thanks. Well, the, I'm sure there'll be more where that uh, came or didn't come from. Well, that's that was a beautiful beautiful prayer and i feel cleansed do you feel cleansed do you feel I do. have you have you uh excised all of your self jewish self-hatred now when you see a, a an israeli flag um at a synagogue are you gonna maybe not be so mean to it i'm going to wrap myself in it mm. and i'm gonna douse it in some kind of well, I'm not even going to say. Wait, that. what's happening? <laughs> You're just Aaron Bushnell yourself, right? Yeah, I might. I might though. You should. Um, so I feel cleansed. I think we all feel cleansed here. And Will Maneker, we feel grateful. G for grateful for having you on. Thank you for coming on Bad Has Barra and talking with us. I feel uh, J for filled with joy at the invite and the opportunity. To uh to shop it up with you, fine gentlemen. Absolutely. And to display my agency. Thank you for displaying your agency. Um, we we love agencies here. Um, CAA, Gersh, <laughs> WME, WME. <laughs> uh, we're a big fan of agency, and we uh, wish that Palestinians would show some. <laughs> sign up, yeah. Sign, sign up to one of those agencies. They should get signed. Yeah. Uh, well, where can people uh find you? Plug your work. Oh, you can, uh, you can find me at Twitter at, at Will Meneker or just uh, Chapo Trap House on Patreon where you can get all the all, all the fine goods and services provided by my podcast. All right. Check that out. We're also going to put it in the show notes. Will, truly, thank you for coming on. My pleasure, gentlemen. And thank you to all of you out there for listening to this podcast. Patreon.com slash BadHasBara. BadHasBara at Gmail. Dot com for all your questions, comments, and concerns. Let's get on out of here once again from the river to the sea. Palestinians, we... where's your agency? Ooh, yeah. I was going to say those were our <laughs> sins, A to Z. Oh, very good. <laughs> Either <laughs> one. <laughs> nice. All right. Jumping jacks was us. Push ups was us. Krav Maga us. All karate us. Taking Molly us. Michael Jackson us. Yamaha keyboards. Us. Jar Jar Binks on us. Andor was us. Heath Ledger Joker us. Endless Prince us.